Good afternoon, this is Mark Cahill. I'm the bus sales director at Bluegrass International, Georgetown, Kentucky. And I'm here to introduce you to our new CE Series electric school bus. This is uh, first for Kentucky for the IC bus product. So I just wanted to kind of give you a little overview of it. First of all, one thing that we have on all of our buses is the widest step well in the industry. So. Kentucky has the new standards where they require the yellow step nosings and the yellow handrails. So great view of the driver or the driver has a great view of the road or the children getting on the bus. So this is our electric school bus. So obviously there's no internal combustion engine, no fuel needed except for some electricity. We have a two stage charger here. It will take either the DC charger or the uh, DC fast charger or the AC charger, 19.2 kilowatt. So 120 kilowatt battery, or I'm sorry, a 210 kilowatt hour battery. So if you got a 30 kilowatt charger, 210, it'll take seven hours if it's dead empty to get it all the way charged up. It'll take about seven hours. Of course, it won't charge to 100% because you know how cell phones are and you know the charging discharging. So it learns how the driver drives and it distributes the power accordingly so this here is our battery thermal thermal management system it cools the batteries and it also in the summertime when it's hot outside it air conditions the battery so it, it's its own little entity here this is for a coolant fill here so charge and then your battery thermal management system. The batteries are between the frame rails. Of course, we can't see them here, but between the frame rails, it's a what they call a two-pack battery. And this two-pack battery is 210 kilowatt hours. We do also have a three battery pack set up, which is 315 kilowatt hours. This 210 should do on average about 125 miles. So Take the bus out in the morning, do a 60, 70 mile route, bring it back in to the garage, plug it in, let it charge for two, three hours. You're gonna, your battery's gonna be charged back up so that you're sufficient to go out on the route in the afternoon. Bring it in in the afternoon, plug it up, let it charge all the way up. It will shut off automatically to, uh, to keep everything from getting too hot. It will also keep the batteries warm in the winter time it'll keep them up to optimal temperature using some of the power coming off of the charger so uh, this also has a big electric motor back here so it's almost kind of like a rear engine bus it's driving you from the back uh, that's a big dana electric motor back here so everything on this bus from the floor up is the same as our internal combustion engine bus everything from the not everything but all the high voltage electrical equipment is below floor level so there's no danger of it you know getting into the passenger compartment up here in the front I'm gonna tilt the hood we have all of our power electronics equipment. We have two coolant tanks. One is for the cabin heaters. One is for cooling the motor. So there's also a radiator, electric fans. You know, it's all uh, electronically controlled. Your power steering pump up here is electronically controlled. And then the cabin heater does have a high voltage heater in that system to heat the coolant to pump it back through the bus to warm your cabin. So again, it's a lot of terminology and, and abbreviations and PCS and all the good stuff in there, but basically it's all electric bus. These are all the controllers and the, and the components of it here besides the batteries and the motor. So we're gonna shut this down. Oh, let me open that back up, Kyle. This bus is equipped with a radio with a PA. 
So you see two horns here. One is for the radio PA, one is a noise generator. The noise generator works from three miles an hour up to 20 miles an hour to alert pedestrians that they're close, you know, that there's a, a vehicle close to them. So once you get above 20 miles an hour, it, it, will, uh, it will shut off. So let's, uh, let's go up here and take a look at the new dash. So the instrument panel, electronic gauge cluster comes on and it says electric powered. Okay, so here's your propulsion gauge over here. Up here if you're using power it will go from zero up to whatever percentage load you're at. Over here is your regen power. Regen, in effect, turns that electric motor into a generator when you let off the throttle. Now, we've also got our battery temperature gauge and our motor temperature gauge. You've got your two air gauges, your 12 volt system uh, charge, and then over here is your RBS, your regenerative braking system. So this bus over here has, it says retarder on off, okay? And there's three levels of regeneration. So if you've got this on, level one will regenerate 33% of the power from your motion. It'll turn that motor into a generator, one third or 33%. Level two is 66%, level three is 99%. Headlight switch, has been relocated from a standard location on our ICE. It's down here on the left driver's panel. Over here we've located that in the dimmer to make it because of the electronics behind here. So you've still got your lamp check system. You know, you've got your electronic stability control. This one has adjustable pedals on it. That's a an option. And then cruise control, <coughs> excuse me, is also uh, required on the electric bus so that's basically it it's a lot simpler than the uh, ICE bus with the transmission because all you can do is go reverse and drive it's just reversing the polarity in the motor you know if it's going one way it's driving you forward if it's going the other way it's driving you backwards pretty simple stuff uh, the rest of the controls over here are all the same that you're familiar with on a international or um, IC bus product. So basically everything is the same except for the drive system. It's there, it, you're familiar with all of it. So um, passenger compartment is the same. You'll notice there's the uh, <clears throat> aisle mounting for the seats is all track mounted and Obviously, that is because you have battery packs in between the frame rails and they cannot obviously bolt it through the floor because of the battery packs. So they provide a full length track on this side to, uh, to fasten the seats into. So uh, one other feature that we're also using and actually Kentucky is going to on all buses is LED dome lights. So if it were dark out right now we would almost be blinded they're so bright they're so much brighter than the incandescent lights and so much more convenient for the driver so just wanted to point that out uh, this does have a heater booster pump obviously because you don't have as much coolant and you don't have that in internal combustion engine generating all that heat so booster pump on off okay so to start this bus you turn the key on foot on the brake, hit the ignition just like you do in an internal combustion. That starts it. You can hear the compressor running, air compressor running right now. And we are in third stage regen. Okay, so the way it was always, it's been told to me is put it in three and let it be. It's the most aggressive braking system, but it will require some driver training to be able to just feather the throttle. So I'll, I'll show you once we get moving here, 
I'll just let off the throttle and, and you know, Kyle will probably get it on the camera here that it jerks us forward. So the trick is feathering that throttle on and off and uh, you never really have to touch the brake. Well, I guess I better put it in drive, huh? You never really have to touch the brake to even come to a stop. So right now I've got my foot on the accelerator, slowly accelerating. And you see our propulsion load is light right now because we're just kind of coasting. So I'll let off of the accelerator. Whoa! And you feel it. Yeah. You feel it. So to actually come to a stop, it would stop us. I mean, it'll stop us almost to a dead stop. Once it gets down to two miles or an hour or whatever, it lets loose and you just coast. But so the the trick is on a route, you know, coming up to a stop, you feather the throttle out and let it slow down coming up to the stop and then brake. This will be great for brake life, lower maintenance. You don't have fuel to put in it. You don't have DEF. You don't have oil to change, all that good stuff. So it's real, uh, real user friendly and also easy to maintain and less cost to maintain. So you can really feel it drag once you let off. So I'll put it in one and I don't know if you'll be able to capture that on the camera but you might might be able to tell a little bit of difference. So it's freewheeling a little bit better. I let off and it's just kind of gradually slowing us down now instead of the aggressive but what that does with in level three you can watch the propulsion meter here again we're at 15 percent load now watch it'll go to regen mode and put in 25 percent of that energy you're using up so it's pretty slick we uh, visited a customer down in Tennessee who has several of these and they are getting great use out of them because they put it in three and let it be they they're in hilly terrain so they get a lot of regenerative braking power put back into the batteries which means they don't have to leave them plugged in as long and take as much power off the grid so and then also you can turn the regenerative braking off and that tell, turns your light off and it just kind of coast and you can hear that noise generator a little bit but it's it's a pretty slick ride and it's it's quiet you can hear all the students in the back you know who's telling secrets to whom and whatever but the drivers love them because they don't have the noise they don't have the vibration that the internal combustion engine does so again to finish up I'm Mark Cahill with Bluegrass International Georgetown Kentucky I'm the bus sales director and this is our new CE electric product